All right, so we're about to string up a pair of uh, Technofiber uh, T-Fights. These are the 295, T-Fight 295, and it's, this is the uh, XTC edition or uh, iteration. Uh, nonetheless, these are a 16 by 19 uh, pattern racket, 100 square inch hoop, so very common. The skips are seven and nine at the head, seven and nine at the throat, so, um, I'm about to string up both of these. I'm going to take the opportunity, since I have a pair of these, to string them up using the short side around the world pattern. Uh, it works really well on this particular racket due to the spacing and the transition areas. Uh, some other around the world patterns might pose problems. So the, I'm going to use the short side around the world on this. And I'm going to try to do, on the first frame, I'm going to string it with the way the pattern was originally written up. I, I first saw the pattern written up back in like 2012 or so uh, on the GSS uh, Alliance site and John Google, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, had written it up and it's a pretty good pattern because uh, in the article he had said uh, try this out. It's an around the world pattern that has no blocked holes and no um, hard weaves either. So that's a that's a rarity to find an around the world pattern that eliminates both hard weaves and blocked holes. Uh, so I'm going to actually show you, demonstrate it, the way it was written. Because the way it's written, you'd use a fairly long piece of string, longer than you... If you're working with a set of string and you don't have, have to conserve string at all, you'll have plenty of string and you can use the uh, big loop method as it was written up. Um, I've adapted the, the pattern so that, um, or the, actually not the pattern, but I've adapted the procedure so that I don't have to cut the extra three feet or so from my reels. Since I'm working from reels, I'm always looking to conserve as much string as possible. So I can do the short side around the world pattern with my normal string length due to a trick or two that I pull. Um, but I'm going to walk you through the way it was originally written, which does use a little bit longer length of string. So. When I string this racket, regardless of what around the world pattern I might be using, the length that I would be cutting from my reel would be 34 and a half feet uh, for this particular around the world pattern. The short side around the world pattern, which uses a longer short side than most any other around the world pattern you're going to come across, um, like a normal length for a short side on most around the world patterns might be 9 feet, 10 feet, something like that, 10 and a half. Uh, so cutting my short length the way I normally would do it using my trick uh, or my shortcuts, I would cut 34 and a half feet from my reel and I would use a short side of 11 and a half feet. And I'll try to, and I'm probably gonna do the second frame that way. So I'll probably shoot a second one using my adaptation to it. But this is gonna be the original method as written. Uh, so if you got a full set, you know, 39, 40 feet of string, it would be plenty. I'm going to cut 37 and a half feet from my reel. In other words, I'm going to cut three feet more than I normally would cut, just so that I can demonstrate how this pattern was originally intended to be done, that eliminates all the blocked holes and therefore doesn't have any hard weaves. So let me cut, uh, actually I already did, I already cut 37 and a half feet. So, so again, I normally would cut 34 and a half but I've cut 37 and a half, a full three feet extra. And I'll show you, I'll stop at that point and show you where that extra three feet comes in. So you'll need, uh, so I'm gonna cut three feet longer than I normally would from my reel. And all three feet of that extra length is gonna be going to my short side. So instead of my short side being 11 and a half feet as I normally would, or like I will on the second racket, this short side is gonna be 14 and a half feet. So I measured off 37 and a half feet already. Uh, the quickest way for me to do that was I did 17 racket lengths, 27 inches, uh, 17 times, and then I deducted uh, or subtracted nine inches from that, and that lands you at 37 and a half feet. So now I'm going to uh, put the short side on the short side and the long side on the long side. So this racket has six holes in the throat. So the main start at the throat, like I said, this is a very, very common pattern for lots of rackets. 16 by 19 with six holes in the throat, mains start at the throat, mains would end at the throat if you're doing it two piece with the uh, skips being seven and nine head and seven and nine throat. So super common 
uh, pattern. So I'm going to take one end of my string and put that on the right side of the racket. That's going to be my long side. And for my short side, instead of 11 and a half feet, I'm going to add the three additional feet that I cut off to that short side. So all, all extra three feet are, are being contributed to the to the short side, and you'll see why later. So I need to find I need to measure off a 14 and a half foot length for my short side. So that's going to be six racket lengths plus an additional 12 inches. So six racket lengths will be, let's see here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six racket lengths plus an additional 12 inches. So right there, that's our dividing point between our short side and our long side. All right, so from your perspective, short side is on the left, long side's on the right. This short side here is the 14 and a half foot long short side, and then the remainder is over here. So let me get uh, most of these mains in and show you kind of, uh, by the way, you're obviously you're going to need a starting clamp to do this pattern. Um, to do it the original way, the way I'm about to demonstrate, you would only need one starting clamp. If you want to do my adaptation to it, that makes life a little bit easier, um, a second starting clamp is used to bridge to the tension head. So and I'll explain that later. So uh, you do need a starting clamp to try this method. So let's get the mains in and uh, see how it all plays out. I'm stringing this with, the, this is Copali uh, at 44 pounds, both mains and crosses.
Okay, so we've got uh, one, two, three, six on the left and six on the right done. And if we tension a seventh main on either side, we will be blocking a hole uh, down here at the seven throat grommet because of the loop here. And here. All right, so that's where this short side comes in. Um, in John's original article, he didn't mention stopping here. He said to install all but the outer main. So he would you would be tensioning this seventh main and this seventh main, and then taking this short side and pre-weaving it down the outer main across the bottom cross, the outer main on the long side, and the top cross, but not tensioning those. It gets the after tensioning the seventh main. You hold it with a starting clamp, but all of this string, this big long extra length, goes around the periphery and it's just in the frame already. And that's how you get around having any blocked holes. So I think when he wrote the article, he was probably working with or thinking of rackets that only have single skips, like eight head and eight throat, where you can tension this seventh main and you haven't yet blocked a hole down here. But on rackets that have double skips, like seven and nine throat, like this racket, or if you're if your racket has 18 mains and you skip 8 and 10 down here, as soon as you tension the penultimate main on each side, you would block that hole uh, down here at 8th throat if your racket has 18 mains or at 7th throat like this racket. So one thing that John never mentioned, if you truly want to eliminate all blocked holes, you have to get this short side string through that grommet before you tension this uh, penultimate main on the short side. So let me show you what you need to do. So that's going to be the penultimate main or the seventh main on this racket. Obviously I'm skipping uh, seven and nine up here. Skipping the requisite holes. And this is the eighth or outer main here that we need to bring down and at least get the tip of this through this grommet before we continue on. So I'm going to put this through there a little bit and now I can tension this and put the starting clamp here so just be wary if, if you have the double skips like this racket get the tip of this string through that gr grommet at 7th throat or 8th throat if you have a racket with 18 mains before you tension this so we're going to tension this 7th main or penultimate main here on the short side but we're not going to move the machine clamp. This is where you hold this with a starting clamp. And this starting clamp is going to be here for quite some time. And this is where you need that really long length for short side because this loop that you're leaving here that uh, exits the starting clamp has to be long enough that later on you'll be able to take this string and tension it and the tension head has to be able to move back without resistance here. But the rest of this string, so you want to leave a loop here big, long enough to reach your tensioner, whatever tensioner you have. Yet the rest of it gets pre-woven around the periphery before you resume with the rest of the racket. So I can drop this clamp out of the way because the starting clamp is maintaining tension on the left half of the racket or the short side. And this string... Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring the tail of this short side string across... And really, I should have I've kind of put myself in a little bit of a bind because I now have this machine clamp in my way and I really need to put this string through there. So I'm going to have to backtrack one quick second to get that clamp out of my way. I don't know. Like I said, this isn't the way I normally do this pattern. I'm trying to uh, go off of memory here. So I, I normally wouldn't have this to deal with. So let me back up a little bit and tension this string and get that clamp out of the way. So I want to get that through that grommet here at seven um, throat. Now I can go ahead and re 
and position that clamp. Okay, so now we're back to where we were. So the idea is you take this short side string which is here, this is uh, the, the bottom cross, and then you route that up the uh, outer main on the long side and then the top cross. So this is going to go here and here. So over here, this loop needs to go I might be able to advance this through a little bit more than it is. And then this string goes, again, this is the tail to the short side, going all the way around. This now gets inserted to where your top cross is going to be. And the top cross would need to be the same weave as the bottom cross, so I need to go under here. and out the seven head grommet up here. So this is the way it was originally intended to be done. The short side has seven mains in and tensioned. Then that string is held, that, that tension is held on the seventh or penultimate main with the starting clamp. This long tail to the short side protrudes from the clamp, the starting clamp, long enough to reach the tension head and then it continues on down the outer main here, the bottom cross, the outer main here, and then the top cross. So it's through all of these grommets that otherwise m might, may or may not be blocked grommets uh, when you tension the rest of the string. So that's the part of the pattern that eliminates any blocked holes to deal with at all. Um, when I do it my way, and I'll show you on the other racket, I don't necessarily put all of this string in in advance. Uh, I might put it part of the way through, especially if it does take care of uh, eliminating some blocked holes. But I'll show, I'll show you something pretty neat is you don't necessarily have to do all of this because at least on this racket with the double skips and the 1619 pattern, even if I didn't put this string through these top grommets here for the top cross at the head of the racket, which is seven head on both sides, those grommets wouldn't be blocked anyway. So this string you can put it in there. I'm doing it this way for completeness to show you the way it was written up. Uh, is to actually have the tail of that short side actually out that grommet. But I can tell you because of the path that the mains runs and where the loops of string are on the outside of the frame, these grommets won't be blocked anyway. When, when I string the second racket, you'll see that I don't even put this string here early on like this because I know that those grommets won't be blocked later. Um, likewise, this grommet where this outer main comes up, right here, it will not, once the crosses go in, there won't be a loop blocking it either. So basically if you run this short side string down and across and maybe tuck the, the tip of it, the tail, into this grommet right here, this grommet right here would normally be blocked if you didn't already have that string in there. So that's the key is to make sure the string goes at least that far around and you have the tip of it here. It doesn't have to go up here and across the top cross at the outset like this, but I'm doing it this way because that's how it was described. So trying to do this um, to the letter the way it was written up. So here's our big long short side that's running through there. Now you understand why that short side had to be 14 and a half feet long, is it's doing all this with slack in it and this loop has to reach the tensioner. So now you set to work on your long side. So You'll notice here that uh, if you tension your seventh main, penultimate main here, you don't have any blocked holes or anything, so you go ahead and tension. Now it's all long, now you're working with the long side for the rest of the racket. You're going to install all the crosses from number two all the way down to, in this case, 18, so from second from top to second from bottom, and then it'll get tied off. I believe on this racket it'll get tied off on this side right here at this grommet. 
So let me go ahead and get the long side going. And actually before I tension that and move this clamp up here in my way, let me go ahead and get my long side through the second cross. You can see it's a little little difficult to see exactly what all is going on um, because you've got string just going everywhere. That's one of the things that my uh, my adaptation to this pattern of what since I don't have all this string sitting there or I try to minimize it, you, you don't have string just all over the place. So that is our second cross, which will be the first cross that we actually tension. So I'm going to bring all the slack through that I can, except for a short loop here to reach my tensioner. And now we're going to tension this seventh penultimate uh, main on the long side. So now we're actually getting set to do the long side. So that's now our seventh main done on the long side, which transitions to our second cross. And then that'll be going to our third cross. Let me go ahead and weave one ahead, make life easy on myself. And this is probably a little easier to do with um, a softer string, multi-filament or synthetic gut, than this stiff poly. As you can see, the stiff poly it wants to keep bowing inward and confusing the issue, but So now we're going to tension our second cross right here. And this machine clamp is free. And now it's just like stringing a normal racket. Bring this through. This is our third. my fourth in here tension our third cross and continue down the racket.
One nice advantage to doing uh, this particular around the world pattern is since the short side is so much longer, uh, like I said, 14 and a half feet, it means your long side that you're doing the majority of your crosses is, is shorter. So uh, when you weave and you're fanning, you're bringing less string through, so there's less wear and tear on the strings, and it's a little bit quicker because every time I was, normally every time I would be weaving across, this long side would have been three feet longer. But because that three feet is on the short side instead of the long side, the, the long side goes through very, very quickly. Like as you're, as you're, if, you're, if you're used to stringing a lot of rackets, you kind of have a pretty good feel when you're weaving uh, and fanning string through, whether or not you're, you have a, a lot of string or you're potentially going to come up short at the end or something like that. And when you're weaving this, it actually will kind of fool you because the long side comes through so quickly that you feel like, am I going to have enough string to finish this racket? But you will. And now's a good time to mention that normally if you were stringing with, say, the Universal Around the World, where there's this bottom cross already installed, on the Universal Around the World, that string is under tension. And that's what causes these mains to, uh, in an alternating fashion, to lift and lower. And that's what creates some of your hard weaves. Um, whereas, now this is a stiff polyester, so that string's kind of moving the mains in a similar fashion. But the point is, is, if this string is kind of left limp, these mains tend to lay flatter the way they would on like a normal two-piece string job. Um, I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's a lot easier to do these uh, subsequent weaves here when this string hasn't been tensioned yet. And that's why you have not, that's why in this pattern you don't tension the outer mains. That's, that's why the, the, um, the claim of no blocked holes and no hard weaves. You don't have any hard weaves because this string isn't tensioned yet. Like, see how quickly that string went through there?
Okay, so we've got one, after this string, we'll have one more cross to do with the long side. Like I said, you, you get the feeling that you're not going to have enough string to complete the racket, but... As I was saying, uh, you get the sense that when you're pulling this uh, short side through each time, I'm sorry, the long side string through each time, you're like, am I going to have enough string to finish this racket? So this is the, the uh, 18th main, I'm sorry, the 18th cross, our last cross that we're doing with the long side. That's why this piece is so short. And that piece is extending about an inch and a half past the back of my gripper. Let's see how much extra I've got. So not going around the Diablo. Yeah, that's about an inch and a half extra there. So my long side is almost exactly what I needed. And then that's going to get tied off. Uh, I had already decided earlier uh, before I even got started that I was going to tie off here at what is normally the tie off for the mains. If you're stringing this racket two piece, the mains tie off here at eight throat. Um, there is a tie off down here at six throat where you normally would tie off the bottom cross, but I don't need to go all the way down there when I've got a tie off right here and it'll keep everything nice and neat on the outside of the frame as well. So we'll put our Parnell knot there. And you'll either have to do, uh, cinch that up by hand, if you don't have a second starting clamp, you've already got your starting clamp occupied down here, so either tighten this by hand with your pliers, or if you have a second starting clamp, you can do that. But then again, if you had a second starting clamp, you probably wouldn't be doing it this way. You'd be doing it my way, which you'll see on the next frame. All right, so the long side is done. Snip this off, get it out of our way. And now it's time to handle all of this slack string that is protruding here from the top cross. So now you have to tension each one of these in turn and likewise pull all this slack through the frame. Uh, my adaptation that I'm going to do on the second one of these rackets, you'll see that I don't leave this big long loop here. I leave a very, very short loop. That way my second starting clamp I can... Uh, attach here and bridge to the tension head rather than have this big long excessively long loop here and by leaving a short loop here and relying on bridging to do that then once I've tensioned each string I only have you know six inches of string to pull through rather than three feet so this is how it was originally uh, written up like I said I'm trying to stay true to the, to the original form so now we have to get the starting clamp off of our penultimate main here, our seventh main, so we're going to retension that. Remove the starting clamp. Put your machine clamp in place. And now pull all of this slack through which with a polyester is easier said than done. If, again, if you've got a second starting clamp, or actually you can, now that you've freed up that starting clamp, put it to good use. Grab the string here and help pull this string through all those 
crosses. A lot easier on your hands that way. So now we're going to tension this long loop. And because it's got additional friction there, because this normally when you tension mains, you don't have the opposing friction of the, the crosses. So I like to give this a, a nice wiggle to break inner string friction and to allow the tension head, because it's constant pull, to continue pulling. So if this string is a uh, needs to overcome some friction or get a little bit more uh, stretch out of it, this should uh, uh, help with that. So now we're going to move our machine clamp down to our outer main, pull all this slack through the bottom cross, Again, save your hands by using your starting clamp if you need to. Depends on what your string is, what the gauge is, so on and so forth. I can't imagine doing something like this with a, a Lou Power Rough, uh, something highly textured. So now we're going to tension the bottom cross. Again, I like to give it a nice wiggle, a little extra time with the tension head pulling on it. Now we have to pull this outer main. Now we can pull tension on the outer main on the long side. Again, giving it a nice wiggle, some extra time. You can see there's a lot of extra string here, this short side that was so long. By the time you pull all the string through the string bed, you're going to have a pretty, pretty good length protruding out of the frame here after this final pull. So now look how much string you have left over. This is exactly why I don't uh, do use this pattern, or at least not in this manner, when I'm cutting string from reels, because that's, you know, my goodness. Well, let's just see how much string is extending past my gripper. So I only need the string to, to reach the back of my gripper, and if I measure the excess, I have... exactly three feet. So I have three feet, more three feet of string extending past beyond the gripper. So if you account for this foot that it takes to get to the gripper, so this string is roughly four feet long, which is three feet longer than I need it to be. This is exactly why I don't do it this way when I'm cutting string from reels. And if you're cutting string from reels, I don't recommend you do it this way either. Um, but watch my next video on this same racket using the same uh, short side around the world pattern, but where I do, where I uh, hold off, I don't run this string all the way around the frame the way I did on this racket. And you'll see that you can this string can be you can do this pattern with a slight adaptation, and this string can be three feet shorter than this one is right now. So again, I I cut this to be 47 and a half feet instead of 43 and a half. Uh, so anyway. There is a way to do it without cutting this extra length. So now, our top cross... Oh, we have to tension this. And again, we'll put our Parnell knot. This racket, the... Uh, the tie off at the head, which is normally for the uh, top cross, if you're stringing it two piece, is at uh, five head. Technofiber rackets are great because the uh, their tie off locations have these easy lock eyelets. Uh, 
which really protect the frame and the grommet. The grommet doesn't get uh, mangled and, and bent out of shape the way a standard grommet does. Be great if all rackets incorporated that, but I'm sure there's a, a patent. So we've got uh, our Parnell knot going here. Yeah, that knot doesn't do anything to those grommets. It's a big, nice, thick piece of hard plastic. Not anything like a traditional grommet. It's a great design. So we'll snip off this big, huge, long tail and do some final straightening and be done. And then uh, I'll string up the other racket. Same racket, same pattern, short side around the world, but I'll do it with three feet less string uh, and without bringing that string all quite all the way around. Since some of these grommets, as I mentioned in the beginning, some of these grommets up here wouldn't have been blocked anyway. You really don't need this extra length to, to route that string up there. Um, it just ends up being in your way. You saw how it was bending in towards the center of the string bed and so forth. So as long as you get the string a little bit of the way around, it's, it's fine. And, and certainly by leaving that really short loop over here instead of the big long loop and using a second starting clamp to bridge to the tension head makes life a lot easier. You won't be pulling so much string all the way around the frame. What? One, two, three, four times. All right, so that's it for the short side around the world on this frame. Check out the next uh, one coming up.